it started in college um, when I was able to go off on my own and just do whatever I wanted, you know. So I, I uh, immediately became addicted to pornography. I'm Carter, and I'm the lead pastor at Redemption Church in Roanoke, Virginia. Throughout college, I would do okay for a few weeks or a few months, and then I'd go back to it. And then and, and I'd feel really bad and get really depressed and really guilty. And then I'd do well for a few months, and then I'd go back to it again. You know, it just it was this really frustrating cycle. I had accountability, and I talked to my friends about it, but it's just nothing seemed to, to be able to help me overcome it completely. I had to tell my girlfriend at the time that it's something that I struggle with. So I, I told Tamara before we got married, and that was hard for her. And I'm thankful she showed me grace throughout that season. I mean, she was just such a, a godly woman throughout that whole process because this was a struggle even through our first few years of marriage until we actually moved here to help plant Mercy Hill in Greensboro. When I started to look at becoming a leader here at Mercy Hill, these were conversations that I was having with Bobby and some of the other guys, uh, accountability-wise. Bobby's like, man, you just can't, like, this can't be a cycle in your life if you're gonna lead other people spiritually. And it's not like he was asking me to be perfect, but there does have to be like a, a victorious struggle that goes on if you're gonna lead other people. Like, if you're gonna lead people to Jesus, then you gotta show them what it looks like to come to Jesus yourself. I got connected with a biblical counselor here in Greensboro when we moved. He walked me through the book Finally Free by Heath Lambert. And he said, well, is there anything you're struggling with in the book? And I said, yeah, I'm really struggling with this line here where it says that if you believe that Jesus can deliver you from this sin, then he will. Like if you believe it, it is yours. The freedom is yours. He said, well, why are you struggling with that? And I said, because it sounds almost kind of like prosperity gospel. It's like, if you just believe, then you can have it. And he said, yeah, but what happens if you don't believe it to be true? What happens if you just say for a second, do I actually believe Jesus could deliver me from this? And if you don't, will you ever be able to get over it? Will you ever be able to overcome it in your life? Do you have any hope at all? You know, I thought on the surface of it, I'm like, oh yeah, I believe that. I didn't really believe it. And I think that's what broke me down to go, I don't think I have been believing that Jesus can actually deliver me from something that I don't want to do, but I constantly find my flesh, my myself going back to for comfort. I don't know that I've been believing God can be my ultimate comfort, that he is the escape that I need to go to, not something else. It's just like the Roman soldier. It's like, man, God, I do believe, but help my unbelief. And I think that humbles you to a point where you realize, man, I don't have it all together and I'm never gonna have it all together. But if I do believe and I let Jesus come in and, and rearrange my desires and rearrange what I actually believe about reality to be true, I can confront the reality that, man, I'm a sinful person and I'm always gonna want something that's not God on one side. But because of his Holy Spirit coming in and saving me and changing me, I now want something that God's done on my behalf. He's given it to me as a free gift. And if I simply believe he's done that, and I believe how good he is, and I believe he wants this for me, it can be mine. I think that is what helped me overcome an addiction to pornography. To know that Jesus, everything that he's done for me is all that I need. I really just, I need him.